This is the video lecture for the Overpopulation Solutions lesson plan. It was created by Andrew Lucas and edited and narrated by Sean Krupa. This video and accompanying lesson plan are part of Ohio University's Boat of Knowledge in the Science Classroom project, funded by the National Science Foundation. So how did we get to 7.3 billion people? Take a few minutes and pause this video to discuss as a class. When you're ready to continue, resume the video. Hopefully in your discussion, you mentioned things like stable government, agriculture, domestication of animals, modern medicine, and the Industrial Revolution, among many other things. For a little bit more context, let's watch a short video by National Geographic. It's part of its 7 billion series. You'll be using information from this series and other parts of the lesson plan. Here's a graph of the world's population throughout history. The vertical dotted line shows the beginning of modern humans, and we see for the first few thousand years that the population was pretty stable and grew steadily but slowly. However, sometime in the past thousand years the population began to explode, and is growing at almost an unthinkable rate. In this video lesson, we'll discuss future concerns with a population that's forecasted to be up to 9.6 billion people by 2050. Specifically, we'll look at energy, shelter, climate change, clean water, and food and resources. Every time we introduce a concern, we'll also talk about one possible solution. 
Let's start with energy consumption. As we can see that even in the past 50 years, consumption of energy has spiked. When you add all the sources of energy that we're creating, both renewable and non-renewable, it will not be enough for the demand that a 9.6 billion population represents. Therefore, we have a difficult choice. We either make more energy, which is harmful to the environment, or we use less energy, which requires a change in our lifestyle. One possible solution to this are green roofs. Green roofs are roofs that are partially covered with vegetation. They've been around since about 1960, and they're self-sustaining and require little maintenance. Essentially, a thin layer of soil is applied to a watertight roof. The important thing is that this can reduce cooling and heating energy use by up to 90% while increasing the lifespan of the roof. However, it's not all too good to be true. There are some disadvantages. They have an initial high cost, and the extra weight is structurally demanding. While we're on the topic of shelter, we saw in the video that for the first time in human history, more humans are living in urban areas versus rural areas. In short, we're running out of space. One solution to this are structures like the Kingdom Tower being built in Saudi Arabia. It has a cost expected to be $1.23 billion and is supposed to be finished by 2019. It has over 200 floors and is over four times taller than the Empire State Building. These structures provide residents, work, retail, and recreation for its inhabitants. You never have to leave your building to go to work, or to live, or to go shopping, or to socialize. Do you think you could live in a building like the Kingdom Tower? Buildings like this work for a few reasons. One, there's essentially an unlimited amount of space if we build vertically. And second, it's actually easier to connect large buildings like this to the water, electric, and internet grid versus thousands of small structures. Now let's talk about climate change. Here we see the concentration of three gases that are known to contribute to the greenhouse gas effect and therefore climate change. Do these graphs look like any of the other graphs we've seen before? Hopefully you recognize the same trend with the original graph we saw for the world population growth. If we could zoom in, we would see the same basic trend. When the world population begins to spike, so does the carbon dioxide concentration. This is a direct result of the Industrial Revolution. Here's one example of a solution that combats CO2 specifically. Blue-green algae love CO2, and they produce 50 to 87 percent of the world's oxygen. Technology is being developed, for example, by Dr. Bayless at Ohio University, that will hopefully lead to lining the exhaust towers of coal-burning power plants with the algae. The algae will grow on vertical screens inside the exhaust towers, and they'll consume the carbon dioxide as it's produced. When they consume the carbon dioxide, the only byproduct of the algae is oxygen and water vapor. And now let's talk about clean water. We can see from the graph in the top left corner that the water that's accessible to us, namely the fresh water that is not in permanent snow clever or glaciers, represents only a fraction of a fraction of the total water on Earth. Therefore, we need to recognize water as a precious resource and use it wisely. For a comical take on water conservation, watch Bill Gates' appearance on The Jimmy Fallon Show. This occurred on January 22nd of 2015, and the video is available on YouTube. The link is provided below. One solution to this is recycling of water. Yes, this includes converting sewage wastewater into drinkable water. We've already been recycling water for uses in agriculture, landscaping, and industrial plants for decades. However, it's time to go all in. This is done using indirect potable reuse. It's a multi-step filtration process. And the model example of this is Irvine, California, with population of nearly a quarter of a million people. Irvine recycles 
21% of its water. For more information on how Irvine does this, visit the site listed below. Now let's move on to food. First, let's talk about the global demand for meat. This is shown in the chart in the top left corner. We see that for every category, the demand for meat will grow by 2050, and in some cases, it will double or more. However, in the bottom right corner, we see that in terms of grain, we're already producing enough grain today to feed the projected population by 2050. Does this seem like a disagreement to you? If it does, you have a very good intuition. Right now, most of our grain that we produce goes into feeding the animals that we consume for meat. We are once again faced with a tough decision. We either need to find better solutions to be more efficient growing food, or we need to eat less meat. One solution to this are vertical farms. Vertical farms can be thought of as tall, multi-floor greenhouses, and they require one-thirtieth the space. For example, one indoor acre in a vertical farm is equal to 30 outdoor acres. They're easily incorporated into cities, and they recycle all their water. Because they're protected from outside environmental factors, they can produce year-round crops in ideal conditions and they also reduce fossil fuel consumption. Picture, if you lived in a northern, colder climate, you could have fresh fruit and vegetables year-round instead of having them shipped from far away. In conclusion, we saw that we're going to face many challenges with a global population rising above 9 billion. We looked at each challenge individually and showed STEM efforts to solve these problems. This concludes the video lecture on overpopulation solutions. Thanks for your attention.